Welcome back to Destructive Creativity. I'm Jonathan, this is Luke the Science Guy. Today we are creating and making and showing you a bunch of different compounds that change color seemingly by magic. I say it's by magic because Luke says he understands it, but then he used words that I don't understand to explain it, so it's probably magic. Let's go! Today we are making different compounds with awesome color changes. And we're not going to be mixing any dyes or pigments, we're actually just going to be mixing different chemicals together and creating different colors. This is really cool and kind of complicated, which is why Luke is here to explain everything. We're going to start off with copper carbonate and make some really pretty greens and blues, and then we're going to mix up some ammonia with copper chloride and make some amazing purple colors. So this is what we're going to do, but first we are Destructive Creativity. If you enjoy anything to do with science or fun, make sure you click that subscribe button and hit the bell icon beside it. That keeps you up to date with everything we have going on. We have new stuff coming out every single Wednesday. All right, let's go. Okay, while Luke is setting up here to start these chemical reactions off, bit of a disclaimer. We're not using the really dangerous chemicals of the color changing compounds. There are some that we just aren't feeling comfortable right now doing. With that being said, these are not perfectly safe. We are working with hydrochloric acid and ammonia. So, you know, just if you don't know exactly what you're doing, maybe just watch us do it so that you don't have to. If you want to learn a little bit more about the safety side of things, we have some hydrochloric acid safety videos on our channel and how to make copper carbonate. The reason why I am comfortable playing with all of these different chemicals is because Luke is actually an instructor at Red Deer College, and he knows way more about this than I do, and it's great to have him on the team. With that being said, let's move on to the actual experiment. Okay, so to start this experiment, what we need is a solution of copper chloride. Uh, we are going to start from copper carbonate and turn that into copper chloride. Uh, you could make it from copper metal if you like, but we have copper chlora or copper carbonate sitting around from our previous video, so we're just gonna start from there. So the first thing I'm gonna do, this is just some hydrochloric acid, this is just some water, add acid to the water just to make a dilute solution. Give that a stir. And then we're just gonna add this slowly to our copper carbonate. We may need to add more acid, but... When you add an acid to any carbonate, the carbonate turns into carbon dioxide and bubbles up a solution. So that's the bubbling you're seeing. So we are just left with um, the conjugate base of whatever acid. So in this case, that's chloride. That's what this is. Okay. And then whatever um, metal was bound to the carbon. I'm fine. So you saw that burst of green. We will try to permanently make it green later. some chunks and they're fizzing away, but that won't be a problem for our purposes. So we will get to making some pretty colors. All right, so once you have your copper chloride solution, you just need some household ammonia, which you can get at your local grocery store, and some hydrochloric acid, which you can't get at your local grocery store. So first off, we're going to make three little test tubes here with our copper chloride solution. Just add a little bit of the copper chloride and then dilute it with water so that they're about the same level. We're just diluting it here just to kind of accentuate the color change. All right, so first on your left, we're going to add some ammonia to our copper chloride solution. This blue color of the copper ammonia compound is pretty much my favorite color. It's one of the reasons why copper is such a great element. On the right, we're going to add hydrochloric acid to our copper chloride. And you get this green color. Okay, so why do these things change these colors? 
Well, color is related to electrons. Basically, everything to do with chemistry is all about the electrons. So in any chemical compound, you have electrons. They are sitting at various energy levels. Now, due to the principles of quantum mechanics, electrons can only have certain amounts of energy. So what happens is an electron at one energy level can absorb some light to go to a higher energy level. Usually that is the highest level electron going to the next available energy level. This here is the spectroscopic color wheel. So what happens is the color of light corresponds to a specific energy of light. Whatever color of light that is absorbed the most strongly is removed from the spectrum that we see. So we see the opposite color. So for copper, that absorbs sort of like a reddish kind of color, and so we see blue. So the, the chemical structure of the copper when it's in water is you have a copper ion in the center, and it's bound to six water molecules. When we add the ammonia, the ammonia trades place with the water to form what's known as hexaamine copper. So it's copper ion in the center, six ammonia molecules attached to the copper. What that does is it allows more of the electrons to move in towards the copper, which shrinks the energy gap between the highest electron level and the next available level. So it changes color from a sort of red color that is absorbed to a even more red color that is absorbed. And so that changes the color we see from a light blue to a purple. Then there's another concept called ligand to metal charge transfer that kind of takes place, uh, which allows the chemical to absorb more photons. And since it's absorbing more photons when it's attached to the ammonia, the color actually deepens, and that's why it becomes such an intense purple color. Moving on to the hydrochloric acid, a little bit of a different chemical change occurs. So we change out the six water molecules for four chloride ions. This has the opposite effect. Rather than shrinking the energy gap between the two energy levels, it increases the energy gap and it actually changes it into a yellow compound. The reason why we see green is that the compound doesn't form quite as strongly, and so we get a mixture of the blue compound with the six waters and the compound with the four chlorides. So yellow and blue mixed together to show green. So here we're bringing hydrochloric acid and ammonia close together, and as you can see, we get a nice little mist forming. What's happening there is the hydrogen chloride fumes and the ammonia fumes are reacting in the air to make ammonium chloride. This isn't particularly dangerous. It's not great to breathe long term, but um, this is partially why you should never have concentrated acids and bases close together. So this is amazing and really pretty, but what possible use is there to just to change colors in liquids? Well, probably the most scientific use for making these kinds of compounds is that you can increase the solubility of various very insoluble compounds. Um, a more practical use is that this is a good way to make very intensely colored pigments. Um, so synthetic pigments, some of them are made this way. This is actually tangentially related to why we can wear purple. So in the past, Purple was really a color for royalty because it was really hard to make organic dyes that were purple. As soon as we were able to make synthetic dyes, suddenly anybody could afford to wear purple, not just royalty. It's really cool! So you may notice that when we were making copper carbonate, you may have seen a little bit of green forming. Uh, the reason for that is that we were adding hydrochloric acid to a copper solution, and so we were making some of this compound here and that's why you were seeing flashes of green. Cool. And we didn't actually make copper carbonate for you today, but if you wanted to go and see it, go check out the link up there, and then we'll you can see how to make it from the beginning. This is Destructive Creativity. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit that bell icon so you're notified every time we have out every time we have a new video coming out. Thanks a bunch, Luke. We'll see you next time. Bye. Click the button. <laughs> so
<laughs> Let's try this again. But it's not magic, it's science. Science that we don't understand. I don't understand. This sucks. <laughs>